I don't know why I'm feeling so good. I don't know why I'm feeling so pumped. But I am. I absolutely am. I'm looking forward to this. I don't know how good your questions are or not. But by God, I'm going to do my best to make this worth your time and have some fun. Because we need it. we got to have it. Not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. It's not just a catchphrase. It's not just a slogan, a motto. It is a way of life. Thanks again to all of you that went to Twitter and submitted your questions for this week's Q&A. Let's go deep, baby. Michael Corbin, my man. He's going to kick us off by asking, Why does WWE always push Batista aside but embrace The Rock when Batista was a WWE product, came up through their developmental, they're the one that made him a big star? And I think it is a completely fair question. Look, I know Batista's not the bigger movie star. That's clearly The Rock. But Batista's carved out a nice niche for himself. He's been in some big movies. He's making money. He's a dude that was a star for the WWE for several years, like I talked about along with Edge and Orton and Cena, was part of the Fortunate Four the guys that helped keep WWE alive and afloat for several years. I don't get it either, like especially when Batista is talking about coming back. If Dave wants to come back, let Dave come back. I don't know if they prefer The Rock because he's Samoan and Vince always has this heart on for the Samoans. I don't know if it's because Batista is a little more liberal in his life views. I don't know if they just don't think they could do business with him, which is completely and totally insane. I don't know, and it makes no damn sense to me. If the dude wants to have one last run, who are we to stop him? Let him have one last run! We could use it! And also, is WWE trying to make NXT the indie of indies, or trying to kill off the indies? Johnny Florida and Joey Numbers think... Ultimately, that the second is their true goal. Based off of WWE's history, what Johnny Florida and Joey Numbers are saying makes absolute, total, complete, perfect sense. The WWE always tries to kill off competition. They always try to take it over. They always have this inferiority complex of superiority complexes that they want to be the only show in town. So I totally get it. I think they're wrong in this case. I think they're way off base. I think WWE absolutely wants NXT to be the indie of the indies because then they can sit there and say, well, we even do the independents better than the independents do the fucking independents. But from a sheer business standpoint, it wouldn't make sense to kill off the indies because then the WWE would have to invest more in terms of a minor league structure, an infrastructure, a talent farm system when they don't need to. Let other people finance the first couple of years of talent's careers. Get them when they get to a certain point. I completely agree they want to be the indie of indies. But killing off the other indies and the other companies? No, just from a sheer business standpoint, that doesn't make much sense because then that would mean they have to invest a whole lot more money in talent development than they probably want to, which in and of itself, you look at NXT, it's not exactly a financial boon for them and it's not designed to be. It's about the financial boon that would come potentially down the road. So no, they want to be the indie of indies with NXT. They do not want to be the only indie because it just doesn't make good business sense. Pro Wrestling Fan 1990. Does Undertaker versus John Cena happen at WrestleMania 35 in a career match with the WWE title on the line? Last part of that, hell no, not going to happen. Could the first part of that happen? Yes, it could. And with it being career versus career, you have gotten to the point now, whereas several years back, if you would have done Taker versus Cena right as the main event of a WrestleMania with the streak still intact and Cena at the height of his powers, it's the ultimate of who's going to win because people wouldn't know. Taker never loses at WrestleMania. Cena is that backstage political force. Who's going to win here? Great question. There is intrigue and interest there. How else do you generate it? Well, now you've gotten to the point where you could actually kind of believe that Cena might say enough is enough and call it quits. Whereas you also think Taker is in a position where he could call it quits, even though we keep thinking that, and yet he keeps coming around. So career versus career match, 
You can't automatically say that Taker would win or lose or Cena would win or lose. It's the only way that you can make that work, especially when you're talking about revenge for what happened at 34 this year with Taker squashing him in a couple of minutes. That was the only viable option they had for that match. If they did a return match, which I guess is always a possibility, this is the only viable way it works. It's career versus career at WrestleMania 35. And if that's the case, then it does have to main event. Mid Carter J. Who would win in a 10-man tag? The OTRS crew? Or the, a team of the suspect sissy, excuse me, <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler, the Bucks of Suck, and the Founder. You men feed me a piece of crap, broke 10,000 guitars, didn't draw a damn dime. Who would win? Well, well first of all, Mick Carter J, I am no mathematical a genius, but I feel like I can hold my own with basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. And in this particular case, when I look at the numbers, if you want to go with the old OTRS crew, and let's assume we go with the five core members, Schlag Daddy, Tasteless Tony T, Mr. Rout, Metal D, Marvelous Mark, that's five of us. I'm counting here, Suspect Sissy, Bucks of Suck, Founder. There we go. That's five on four, that's not a ten-man tag. Where the hell is the tenth guy here? Who is their fifth guy? So... Let's pretend you just screwed up the math. Or let's, that doesn't matter. Let's break down how this would go down. We can't count on Marvelous Mark, because he's probably going to be banging the shit out of one of the divas. Or one of the women's, it doesn't matter. He's Marvelous Mark, he's going to screw something. So he won't even be a factor in the match. Tasteless Tony T will be so enamored with Dolph Ziggler that he would repeatedly try to squeeze his ass and give him a hug to the point where they will disqualify him. So that leaves us in a three-on-four handicap match situation. It's a suspect sissy, it's the Bucks of Suck, and the Founder against the Schlag Daddy, Mr. Rout, and Metal D. And in that case, we totally have Metal D dressed up like Earthquake because believe me, not only could you see it, not only could you want to see it, but deep, deep down, you know you would want to see it, especially with him jumping around. So we got the muscle, the gristle. Mr. Round's got to have some type of purpose somewhere. Like he could be a cheap shot artist. He could be outside the ring and grab him and throw him, pull him down. The Schlag Daddy could handle his own. And when in doubt, we got the ace in the hole. We got B-Rad. He could do the run-in. Give me the OTRS crew, bitches, all fucking day. No thanks to Marvelous Mark and his fucking libido and Tony with whatever the hell you call that. He'll probably take the Bret Hart jacket from the Hall of Fame Museum of Waterloo and try to wear it in the ring and, like I said, try to play grab ass with the suspect sissy. Oh, and one more time. Fuck Dolph Ziggler! Moving on. The Ryan Steele. Will Chicago ever see another Crosstown World Series, or is that just a pipe dream? Eh, if it happens someday, that's cool. I don't know if it's a really a dream. It feels like it's more of a dream for White Sox fans who always have that built-in inferiority complex because they are the second baseball team in that town, and nobody really gives a fuck about them outside of the small base of Chicago White Sox fans who can't bother but to halfway fill up the cell anyways. Like, as a Cubs fan, I don't care. I don't even care what the White Sox do. And shit, from the White Sox standpoint, y'all won your World Series 11 years before the Cubs did. Get the fuck over it. If it happens, cool. The rest rest of the country might not care, but Chicago certainly would. But I don't care to see it one way or another. Uh, WNC Podcast. How far can will WWE take the pairing of Selena Vega and... Andrade Cien Almas. Well, especially as I think you referenced in the tweet, talking about wanting to have a Latino Hispanic star, this is one of these instances that you've got kind of the right mix. I could fully see him being a world champion at some point. I totally could. They could potentially feel like it's ADR gone right for them. Like they made Jinder Mahal a world champion specifically because of his ethnic background, his race, whatever you want to talk about, his descendancy. So it is totally within the realm of possibilities because Andrade Almas is not black or Asian that he could get a monster push at some point. 
and someday they might just be like, okay, we're ready to go with him. We want to make him a star. They'll do it. So I'd be more surprised if they didn't at some point. Smackdown GM Page. Like, that's your Twitter handle. This ought to be good. Do you agree that the Page sex tape jokes and references need to stop? <laughs> no. Look, you could sit there and be talking about how she was in a bad place and da 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 da. But you know what? At some point in time, people need to be accountable for their actions and their responsibilities too. Granted, I'm not going to sit there and make a make a living off of making a ton of references every once in a while. Well, it's fucking there. So what? So she liked having dudes bust on the NXT title and bust all over her. She felt comfortable enough to allow somebody to record it. For all you know, she might have been the one that damn leaked it. Do you know? Do you really know? It's out there. It happened. So no, they don't need to fucking stop. No. The whole thing, oh, she's in a bad place. She seemed like she was in a pretty good place in the videos. And I understand what you're saying. Maybe she's not. Yeah, there are other things we could talk about. We can move the hell on. But the fact is, it happened. So you can't just pretend like it didn't happen. And other guys and gals get jokes about this and that. She can own up to it, too. She can take it well. Ask Xavier Woods and Beef Mo Brad Maddox. She could definitely take it. She knows what she's doing, fellas. No wonder you liked her pale ass so much, even though she looks like shit. She looks like a freaking drug addict now. As much makeup she cakes on her face is horrible. A uh, pro wrestling talk. The best and worst thing about school life for you. Um, worst thing was bullying. Best thing was when I was a runner being a part of a team. Fair enough. Uh, the other worst thing would probably be growing up broke as bricks. Um, so that, that, that didn't help things either. Uh, missed out on a lot of things. Didn't have a lot of things. So, yeah, not something I would choose to relive again. Uh, Byron Andreas. <clears throat> excuse me. What do you think of Chris Jericho holding an NJW or PW title? I just said, just say New Japan, Jeff. Okay, cool. It makes more sense for him to actually win a title when he wrestles somewhere or win a match there because otherwise you get a diminishing return by having Chris Jericho show up if he always loses. Now you actually have a reason for him to have a return match with your company. You actually have planted at least a little bit of a seed of doubt about whether or not he will win or lose. So you've created a little more spontaneity that comes along with him wrestling again at a New Japan show. That's not a bad thing. That is a good thing. I don't care if he's not a full-time employee of the company it is what it is. It's just fine. And who are the sexiest wrestlers of New Japan, according to Marcus Smart? Well, just like Dave Meltzer, if they're in New Japan, they're all sexy to him. And surely, he would be down with the Bucks of Suck and the Golden Lovers. Just a thought. Brink Doofus. Will The Miz ever win the WWE title again? I most certainly believe he will. Alfredo Regalado, name three things the WWE needs to do better. Allow people to sink or swim on their promos. You can create bullet points and stuff, but stop trying to script out every goddamn thing word for word. It's just not organic and it just doesn't work. Number two, number two is actually try to give us characters that are different, that are unique, that actually matter, that actually stand out. And number three, stop wasting our time with a bunch of crap that doesn't matter. So much of what they do now is ultimately one ginormous circle jerk of a waste of damn time. If you could do those three things, it is the beginning of vastly improving the product. Dave Garcia, which show did you like better, 9798 WCW or 9798 WWF? Um, hmm. If I took the two years combined, I will go 9798 WWF. I still love 1997 professional wrestling. It's my fa I, like I said before, it's probably my favorite year of wrestling as a whole. ECW's coming up and they're really establishing themselves. WCW's at the height of their power and they're doing awesome things. And the WWF, you could see the change and the really the seismic shift in their product and their presentation throughout the course of 1997. Like when you go from Royal Rumble 97 to Survivor Series 97, it is striking just how different everything about the product is. 
and I love going back and watching that year because a lot of cool things happened throughout the course of that year. Um, but I probably would say, say, especially when you throw 98 in the mix, like you've got The Rock starting to figure it out. Obviously, you've got Austin becoming the dude. You've got the story with Taker and Kane. Give me 98 WWF, 97 WWF as a combination. Uh, Jack Madrix. Is it time for some for WWE to do something big and better with Biggie? Yes. 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 You could split him off from the New Day and probably still have the New Day kind of function and maybe you could throw somebody else in there and use it as a device to help elevate somebody else. But yes, Biggie should be doing bigger and better things. It's time to move the hell on with him. Make him a star. Voice of Logic, who's a better rapper? Macho Man or Enzo Amore? How is this even a question? How is this even up for debate and conversation? Be a man, Hulk. Macho Man wins all fucking day. You can bang that shit all day. Without any real profanity either. Like, what's the worst thing he says? A diggity damn, Hulk. That's about it. It's cool, clean Will Smith type of rap. You know, his tribute song to Mr. Perfect Kirk, Hennig. Enzo is a rapper by comparison. Can eat shit. Jeremy Adams. Do wrestlers have sports agents? Well, the good ones do, surely. Most of them have some form of representation, as they should, because you need people to do some of that type of stuff. Handle some of the booking of potential endorsements and handling some of your business affairs, contract negotiations, and so forth. So most of them will have some type of representation, whether it's an actual agent or legal advisor, lawyer, something along those lines. This is MZP. If WWE could bring one wrestler back from the dead, who would it be? Uh, probably Owen Hart. Because nothing good came from his death. That's what I would like to believe if you held a gun to Vince's head. And you said, what one wrestler? I would have to think it would be Owen Hart. Um, although with his sick fascination with the dude over the years, uh, in spite of an overwhelming amount of evidence that indicates this was not a good guy and probably a murderer, brother, Nancy didn't tap. Gotta believe it might be Superfly Jimmy Snuka. Uh, Gavin Elliott, will you ever review No Way Out 2001? Maybe someday, hell, why not? Charles Mitchell! Why do fans who don't like WWE's product still watch it? Fair question. Excellent question. The truth is, it is really hard to quit and give up on something that you have invested so many years of your life into. I use a sports analogy. The Cubs were terrible for years. I still watched the team. I still supported the team. I still loved the team. Even if I complained about them, even if I bitched about them, with the hope that someday, somehow, they could figure out a way to win it all. And in 2016, my patience and faith was finally rewarded. How idiotic would I have looked if, let's say, after 2004, when that season imploded and da-da-da, I would have given up on them. I can't be a Johnny-come-lately and hop back on the bandwagon. I'll probably break my foot doing so any damn ways. So it's, it's easier said than done, and when you equate it to real life, like, it happens. It's part of the deal. Your teams can be bad and be bad for a long time, but you still stick through it and still support them because you still love them deep down with the hope that someday your faith, love, patience are rewarded. It is both a totally unfair question to ask, Charles. I completely agree with the premise of your question. And I also feel like it is completely and totally understandable to understand how easy it is to say, I can't just quit it. I can't just give it up. Like professional wrestling, whether I necessarily always like it or not, has been part of my life for a little over three decades now. It has become a part of my personal identity. It has brought me things, both good and bad. I can't just give up on that. I can't just stop that. It's not that fucking easy. And for some people it is. And if it is, I salute them. But it's not for me. And it's not for a lot of other people. And instead of just automatically taking the approach of, again, as the WWE kind of programs people to blame the fans because it's the fans' mistakes, 
Instead of blaming the fans and questioning why they do something, why can't the WWE just be fucking better? Why can't they just get their shit together? But again, the question you ask is very logical. But there's also a very easy logical answer to it. And Mr. Tuxedo is going to close us out by asking me, are there any videos that you regret making? Uh, the world from J to Z burial, uh, the spreading our wings with the newsletter garbage, probably would rank in the category of, in an ideal world, if you could go back and change things, you might not do them. That said, if you live your life with regrets, if you live your life in the worlds of woulda, coulda, shouldas, and wishing and hoping you would have done this or that differently, then you never grow as a person. I learn from those things. Like deep down, I wish I wouldn't have done like that world from J to Z burial because it was unnecessary. It wasn't needed. The twisted thing about it was it wasn't necessarily bad for me or the old channel at the time, that's for sure. But it's like, it just wasn't necessary. It wasn't like he was a bad dude. Now, some of what I said was valid, and I stand by it to this day. But some of the other stuff, you know, yeah, granted, the dude had taken cheap shots, too, um, first. And then I responded and ended it. But sometimes when they go low, you're supposed to go high. You know, sometimes maybe you have to go low. But do I regret ultimately doing that particular video, let's say? No. And the reason being is because I did it. So at the time, obviously, I felt like it was something that was called for. I felt like something that was needed to be done. That said, do I learn from something from that? Yes. Do I hope I grow from something like that? Yes. But I can't sit there and say I regret it. Same thing with the newsletter bullshit. Especially in the grand scope of things, all the shit we got for that. Can you believe it's been over six years now since that crap? And every once in a while, still somebody still brings it up. Like, it's going to bother me. Nah. It is what it is. It was a dumb idea. It was a dumb decision. It was a dumb thing. Poor execution. It was not, just so many other things about it were stupid. But now six years later, we get to the irony is, is almost every single fucking body with any type of audience basically fucking eBay's with a Patreon account. Like I'm one of the only ones that doesn't freaking do it. Do I regret doing that? No. Because you learn from it. You grow from it. I learned a lot from that crap six years ago. Certain naiveness about certain things, certain belief about certain things that frankly weren't true. And to this day, if anything, I could say I've never really truly put my whole self like I could into this ever again because I didn't feel like it was worth it because I didn't feel like it would be rewarded. And I'm not necessarily talking about financially. But it was like, you, you learn that you, you think people have your back, you think this, and you think that, and you find out just how wrong you are. <clears throat> and like I said, especially now, when I see almost everybody else fucking begging for money and shit, and that's what it is, I mean, cool for them, they do it, you want to support somebody by doing that, I applaud you for doing so, that's cool. But it's not something I'm going to do, and it was still horse shit. That we got all that shit six years ago and all the crap that came out of that as a result. And then you turn around and you look at how shit is now. Once again, leading the way as we did so often. But I don't regret making it for a second because we fucking did it. Can't change what happens, so why worry about it? It's like I look at it with life. You can sit there and worry about how things were done differently, but things happen for a reason. Like, I didn't choose to grow up the way I did, but it happened. I learned some valuable life lessons along the way. I think about it this way. I, I think about, you know, things like, if you'd have told me at 18 I'd be living out in Richmond, Virginia, I would have said, you're fucking crazy. And even now knowing, oh yeah, newsflash, Ashley and I are no longer together, and that's been that way for a little bit, actually. Um... But if I sat there and said, well, I wish I wouldn't have moved out here because it ultimately did not work out. No, I can't say that. Because 
on the one hand, she wasn't a good person for me. She wasn't the right person for me. And to be fair to her, I wasn't the right person for her. You can have love for somebody and they're just not be the right person. And the best thing for all parties involved is to say, thanks, time to move on and go separate ways. As it, like I said, that's, that's okay. It's how it goes. But it's also because of her that I was able to get away from the Midwest, which I really needed to. I was able to find my footing here in Virginia and get myself on a decent career path. Without meeting her, I would have been able to do none of that out here. Would have never gotten Summer, would have never gotten Piglet. You know, from like, when you think about the dog, like all these things that happen, they happen for a reason and I choose to, even though on here I don't always do the best job of looking at it that way. And I don't always present it the best way. When I, when I look at it, you try to take the positive out of every situation as much as you can. I am thankful for the close to seven years that her and I had, even though we went about two or three years too long, if I'm being completely frank and honest. And again, that's not something to knock her for. That's not something to bully her for. That's not something to fuck with her over. It just is what it is. And you look at it and it's like, there's still good that came out of it. And ultimately, I hope she would think long term as she goes forward with her life that there was good that came out of it for her too. Now, ultimately, because it's her, she probably won't because the next time she takes accountability for something will be the first time she takes accountability for something and there lies in part of the problem. But all bullshit and joking aside, I don't regret ever starting a relationship with her. I don't regret coming out here. There are things I could say I wish I'd have done differently or wish would have went a different way, but I didn't. And things happen for a reason. And you can then meet wonderful people when you don't think you're going to. You can still find good things when something doesn't go right. So there's a little tidbit personally that you probably, probably didn't know because I hadn't really brought it up, but it's there. But again, no regrets. You don't hate that other person. You learn good and bad. And you also try to be thankful and emphasize and focus on those positive things. And that's what I try to do. Because, frankly, a lot of good came out of burning through most of my 30s with that individual. No way in fuck I would ever marry her. No way in hell. But, will there always be a spot in my heart for her? Absolutely. Will I always have some love for her? Absolutely. Will I always, you know, be there as like an ear uh, to talk, somebody to talk to if she needed support or a friend? Absolutely. Because again, when you look at all the negatives, there are still positives there. And it's too easy as human nature to just focus on the negatives. And it comes back to your original premise, Tuxedo, about uh, videos that you regret making. I regret none of it. There are things I could maybe say I wish I wouldn't have done, but I'm not going to regret it. Because it's done, it's happened, and even the mistakes and the bad choices and the bad decisions, the bad videos... You'll learn from them and you try to improve and better yourself. No reason to regret it because then again, out of this comes that and out of that comes this. You can still take negatives and turn them into absolutely huge positives. So no, I don't regret it. Not a single damn one of them. Not a single damn one of them. Some of them could have been better, a whole lot better as I'm sure a lot of you would agree. But again, not regretting a single one. It's been hard as an adult to under, to come to grips with this and understand this, but I've, I've learned over the years and gotten a lot better at not looking back, but looking forward. Your future and destiny lies this way. Misery and self-loathing are that way. Great question to end the Q and A, man, went deeper than I thought it was going to. Anyways, still have fun with it though. We can love, live, and learn, and laugh, and ha, 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 ha. It's a celebration, bitches. Anyways, this is OTRS Central. I am the Schlag Daddy. Remember, not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. 
I'm not e-begging. Just go buy a damn shirt, would ya? They're not that bad. Later.